Coming from the capital market in Africa, I'll focus my conversation on the um, capital market and how I think capital market will bring about development, moving people from um, situations of dire poverty towards um, economic and social sustainable development in Africa. And this is coming at the time where we think that um, aid and assistance in Africa has somehow failed to bring about sustainable development. For decades, um, Africa has had challenges with its pace of economic development, the pace of um, moving people from dire situations of poverty uh, towards better economic and social welfare. This lack of inclusive growth um, has to do with a combination of factors from um, colonial, its history, its structures, infrastructure, um, and systems, which has a partial role to play to this. However, after more than um, 50 years of independence for most African countries, um, the history of colonial is failing now to be a compelling um, argument for the lack of development um, in Africa. And also there are other um, focuses or areas where um, we think that development in Africa has not been achieved because of them. These are geographical locations, culture, and probab probably um, our own thinking and mentality. Yes, there are some countries in Africa um, that are constantly severely affected by weather. There are some several um, landlocked countries. And yes, there are dozens of um, countries in Africa that are not blessed with um, natural resources. And yes, there are um, uh, deficits and gaps in um, skills that will then um, propel businesses to, to develop and create um, jobs and employment. So the, all this needs to be addressed. However, um, recently, and um, it has somehow become clear from scholars to academicians to professionals, politicians, and diplomats, that we seem to agree that um, foreign aid and dependence um, and assistance and help has been also a major hindrance um, to development in Africa. And let's look at the statistics. After five decades of, um, and with more than a trillion dollar that has been poured in Africa, which is currently almost 40% of the total African GDP, um, a lot of Africans are still living um, in less than a dollar a day, despite all that um, assistance which has been going to Africa. And I think because of aid, Africa has almost failed to, address, to, to embrace an idea that it can be responsible for its own development without um, dependence on aid, assistance, or um, help, or guidance. And because of um, dependence, Africa has failed to seriously look on its approach towards um, uh, creating a conducive political, legal, and business and investment um, uh, approaches that will then facilitate investment and innovations. Because of reliance um, on assistance, Africa has largely failed to enhance its laws of enforcement and enforcement mechanisms has failed to create transparency and fiscal systems, has in some cases failed to create independent monetary authorities or vibrant stock markets or capital markets that can foster um, growth in business, development um, projects in both size and impact to its societies. Instead, Africa, its institution, political, um, economic, and business institutions are still highly dependent on help and assistance in one way or, or the other. And between 20 and 50 um, percent of the government budgets in Africa still depends on support. This says that we in Africa have failed to pay good attention to our own internal or domestic um, potentials, opportunities, and resources in carving way to maximize utilization of our own resources for sustainable economic development. And the real question in front of us today is, has aid-driven intervention towards development produced any meaningful solution to Africa's sustainable economic challenges? 
For me, the answer will probably be no. And this is why. Despite billions of dollars that have been poured into Africa over the past five decades, Africa has almost failed to generate consistent and inclusive economic development, and in some cases, have actually regressed. If, for example, we compare Africa and Asia 50 years ago, and then fast forward to situations today, one might um, agree with what I'm trying to say here. Market-driven approaches, which is what I'm compelled to think, will enable Africa to address its issues of fiscal, monetary, and trade policies in a more meaningful manner. It will enable um, creating quality and strong institutions that will then ensure rule of law, respect of property rights, independence judici judiciary systems, growth promoting economic policies as well as attractive investment policies. The need for greater transparency and accountability in a way that African govern itself, in the way businesses are run and conducted in Africa, can also not be um, overemphasized. Now, to address these issues, um, which are related to long-term sustainable growth and poverty alleviation, Africa needs to operate in an environment where corruption is not as rife as it is, and where transparency um, and in an environment and society where accountability and good governance will be at the core culture of its governance, its business conduct, its ethics and practices. Let me try to share my thinking on how transparency, good governance and accountability can be achieved through the use of capital or stock markets in Africa. Currently, we, we have been witnessing, for us coming from Africa, an idea which is growing, I think, um, and an understanding that developed countries like yourselves, relations with Africa needs to refocus from being aid and assistance um, and dependence type of relationship towards development-based partnerships which are driven by trade and investments. This new approach, to my understanding, is meant to address um, and enable economic growth, job creation, and sustainable social and economic welfare in African communities. If African development partners and African government and businesses decide to reduce aid-driven model of economic development towards this new partnership, which is based on more trade and investment, then capital, especially long-term capital, sourced from financial capital markets will then have a role to play. As we know, financial capital markets not only enable mobilization of um, savings and resources and capital efficiently um, from the public and institutions, which are then priced um, better and efficiently and then be directed to different sectors of the economy, especially in sectors that there is efficiency and productivity and optimal being utilized but also it brings about responsibility, accountability, transparency, good governance, and rule of law. It is in very rare cases that you'll hear in stock markets where uh, there will be some shadow um, deals or corruptive um, behavior among um, stakeholders, being financiers, investments, or businesses. Therefore, in my view, growing and strengthening financial and capital markets in Africa so that they can play a vital role in bringing about accountability, transparency, and emphasizing on disclosure and good governance, while at the same time enabling businesses and the governments to access efficiently and better priced investment capital is obviously the right cause to pursue. This is how it has worked in other places in the world, from the industrialization era in, in, in Europe to recently what we are seeing in Asia where financial and capital markets are playing a key role towards um, economic development in a more sustainable, in a more um, consistent um, manner. Market-driven and capital approach, I believe, will enable growth in trade and investment, which will enable growth of capital markets, will drive trade and economic ties between markets, and will contribute more into growth in trade and economic interdependence between sectors within the economy, um, but also between inter-economies or inter-countries um, uh, dependencies. As is, there are wide deficits in infrastructure, for example, in Africa, ranging from roads, um, railways, um, ports, airports, health facilities and schools, manufacturing, natural resources, hospitality, et cetera, et cetera. Now, as we know, infrastructure, which is supposed to be the engine of growth, is in great um, shortfall in Africa. These um, projects can be financed 
through financial and capital markets where there will also be accountability, transparency, and good governance. The same applies to sectors such as agriculture, which are meant to be more inclusive in moving people out of poverty. If they can be financed in a more efficiently priced um, capital, then that will bring about change in the way Africa um, governs its own, the way it governs its businesses, and the way um, it leads its people's lives. I would propose, therefore, that Africans development partners collaborate and partner with capital markets in Africa so that together we can deepen our capital market and increase their credibility and relevance towards becoming key platform for attracting and mobilizing um, funds, both from domestic and international markets. And we may partner in areas such as capacity building in Africa, which will be short term and then give um, uh, Africa's the ability to, to play their own role, but also encourage cross and dual listing for companies, especially companies which are operating in Africa. They have key operations in Africa, but they are not sourcing their capital from Africa. Instead so, and as it is, um, returns, good returns on any investment goes where money came from. And if that money is not coming from Africa, definitely it's going somewhere. And therefore, um, if this business will consider to use partially the local financial capital markets to, to access capital, but at the same time enable um, businesses which are operating in Africa and governments in Africa to be more responsible and more accountable and more, um, allow more transparency and rule of law, that will be more helpful. Now, let me, let me be on the uh, positive side in the next few minutes and finish by saying that we, we have seen some good examples in, already in Africa. There are countries in Africa that have learned and some other will need to learn from others who have learned already. Countries such as Botswana, um, Mauritius, Ghana, South Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, and small markets like um, where I'm, I'm coming from, Tanzania, are showing good um, signs of economic and financial success. In Tanzania, for example, over the past um, 24 months, we have witnessed and taken measures that have improved foreign participation in our capital market and have re-emphasized on good governance and more disclosure and um, transparency and creating an, a, an environment which is more conducive in attracting um, local and foreign capital to come in. As a result, we have seen in, in that short period, our investors' wealth, both local and foreign, grow by more than 150. That is the growth in market capitalization and growth of indices, more than 150 for that short period of time. But also we have created a segment in the market to enable small and medium um, companies, which are the engine of econom economic development in Africa, to as well access this source of capital, which is more long-term and sustainable through the capital and financial markets, so that these small and medium-sized companies can, can as well be able to operate um, in a more sustainable manner. But in between, they will be able to access capital whose goes with responsibility, um, whose goes with accountability, which goes with um, being more transparent and um, becoming good governed. Now, as African countries move away from the vicious aid cycle, um, from the culture of dependence, um, from corruption, corrupt behaviors, towards market-driven and capital solutions, towards uh, um, increasing savings and investment from both domestic and foreign, towards accessing funds um, from financial markets, funds whose access and usage um, requires a great deal of responsibility and accountability, of good governance and disclosure, I think with this new refocus in the way Africa should run its businesses from the government to private sector will enable sustainable economic development. Thank you.